Okay, so uh, let's have a 10 minute break and then we'll have Will Hindle sound. Yeah. Okay, last tonight is, uh, is Will Hindle, uh, who's here from the uh, University of South Florida, who's transplanted from California. Uh, and uh, the only thing I would say, by way of introduction, would be a personal remark, is that there's no one, no one's whose films uh, I enjoy seeing so much as his. <coughs> I think the only reason I wanted to get up first is because they're going to show uh, Jerry picked out two songs, 29 Merci Merci and uh, Chinese Fire Girl. I haven't seen 29 Merci Merci in, gosh, I guess three or four years now. So we'll be seeing it. I said we'll be seeing it. You want me to stand higher? Oh. This? Pull the mic over. Stand straighter. <laughs> Whatever turns you on. Uh, yeah, I haven't seen it for about three or four years, possibly more. Um, and I really don't know what's in it. I guess maybe I should watch this film and find out what I did. Um, I think it was a time when I uh, was unable to... Uh, I've just lost the key to my house. I'll be damned. Oh, well. <coughs> uh, I think it was a time, yeah, I'm quite sure it was a time when I didn't have an awful lot of money. And uh, these scenes were drawn from outs, from films I had made. Somebody said that, how did you get outs from uh, last year at Marienbad? And I said, these are not outs. From any I filmed those. Oh. And uh, there are some scenes I didn't, from the end of a rocket and things like this. Those came from a TV station, but most of them were outs. All I wanted to do was have titles at the beginning, uh, 10 minutes of titles and then the end. But uh, a picture got tacked onto the end of it. And I don't remember how. It's in three parts divided by uh, the ringing of a telephone that's, that's never answered. I think I had about a dollar thirty-nine to make it and to print it. I want to thank Bruce Bailey and uh, Michael Stewart and Jerry O'Grady for keeping me here. When I first I first arrived, I listened to the uh, erudition involved, and I thought, I, "This is uh, I ain't got it." You know, I just I don't know uh, a great deal about what they're talking about, um, and I thought maybe this is might which this conceivably might be what you want to hear. I'm not anti-theory; it's just that. Um, a number of readings in my life have uh, told me that you must act directly. Uh, well, Hamlet, for one thing, I, is an excellent example of uh, what happens if you think too much. Uh, I and mean, if you go around saying, well, I, I don't think I should do this now, or I think I should do this now, and I do this because, and uh, 
you know, dictum has such and such. And it, you have to wait till the end of the play, and then everybody gets wiped out. Um, you can find any number of excuses for backing up what you don't want to do. Um, no, I suppose the other is true also. But um, I call it the Hamlet. I, a number of those things in the film I, I'd forgotten completely about. One is the Hamlet syndrome, um, which I've never heard talked about. Perhaps it doesn't exist. But it's the, um, it's the thing where you just think it though, think a thing absolutely into, into powder. Um, the reason the film ended, I guess, on the uh, name of the piece uh, was, I think, songs from emerging nations. Um, it was some sort of raw power compared to all that uh, sophistication, supposedly, that, uh, that sort of went on before. It's a statement of, uh, oh, Carlos Castaneda did it again. Uh, when I was reading his last book, thank God, before the Time article came out. I'd have had to quit it. But it said, um, you know, how, how do I run at night? I can't really see. You know, I can barely walk. Uh, I said, will you go? Oh, I tried that all along in my room. Curl the hands under, slightly crouched forward. This is the way I usually walk already, so I've got it half made. And uh, carry, carry nothing in your hands. Uh, use a knapsack, this sort of thing. But at night, you just move quickly, and your body will take you there. Uh, don't let your mind interfere with what your body knows. And uh, true, I found out that's sort of the way I make films, which isn't extremely popular in the Northeast, I imagine. Must have a little more than that. But um, there's a little background that has nothing to do with uh, creating anything in front of you. I just don't think you know an awful lot about uh, Willie Hinkle, who uh, I find hard to believe exists also. I can't really believe that anybody's interested in, in my past. My work, fine. But possibly that's what this is all about, what goes into a work like that. Um, yeah, I sort of have a past that I don't mind running in the dark with. Um, I don't have to think continually. I don't want to think continually about uh, my present thought. It will come about. Uh, the next film we're going to see is uh, in two parts. The vision was running in the dark. Um, I don't think I'd stopped the world yet, but it was running in the dark. And uh, the voice was running in the dark. The voice on that was mine. I couldn't afford to uh, make lip sync film, so I did the sound separately. Um, but I have had a sufficient enough past where I don't really believe I should doubt my body. Um, as opposed to thinking a thing to death. I don't really know where the demarcation comes, but, um, well, why not? Okay, yeah, I was born in, uh, in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, and I uh, was raised in New Orleans and San Francisco, and um, spent a couple of years in Casablanca putting out a newspaper, magazine, really, when I was uh, 20, and uh, came back to the United States. I did not particularly uh, want to go to college, but so many people said, you're putting out a, a magazine here in Casablanca and your school. What school did you go to? I said Burbank, Burbank High School. No, 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 college. Well, I've never been there. Well, uh, there was a little bit of surprise, and somebody came up and said, well, I will uh, pay your tuition for the first two years of any of any Eastern college you wish to go to, mainly because he was from the East, then a factor, and I said, no, no, I could never make it. So I came back to the United States and went to uh, the West Coast and picked out the hardest school I could find there. Uh, at the time, I guess it was, Stanford, and uh, I took up English, uh, having to do with my writing. I don't think my previous grades, could I have, uh, I just woke up before this. Um, not quite awake yet. Um, yeah, uh, I've run across any number of uh, of things that uh, some film people have in common, and one is uh, one is English background. I'd like to put all this down someday, only I still can't believe anybody would be violently interested. 
Uh, three things I found that, uh, see I'm already rambling, I can start. Uh, English as a major with uh, possibly math training and uh, music training. I'm weak on math only because I didn't have time once I got hooked on the language and the music. I know my classes in Florida now are made up mostly of, uh, of little English lessons and little music lessons. Uh, oh God, I will ramble, it's incurably rambling. But uh, I was weaned on Stravinsky, Bach, Yangen, and Janacek. I don't remember any popular music when I was little at all. It was only after I uh, got into the current music, which I guess began somewhat in San Francisco. I saw it in person, and uh, it was very fulfilling. But if you want to have to listen to a record, those are the sort of things that I listened to as a kid, from about five, six on up. Uh, sort of an ingrained sense of rhythm and, and, and uh, privilege to, to violate it. Uh, in the case of Stravinsky, he never violates anything as far as I'm concerned. It goes on and on um, in perfect harmony with himself and what he's trying to do. Oh, it's true, lady. <laughs> Have any of you heard that? Uh, well, never mind. It turned into a music lesson here. But this is what I do uh, with my class. I, uh, I try to, as soon as it's how they can't go through the same thing I went uh, through in later life, I try to get back to their past. Uh, and it's kind of working fine. I talk about uh, toilet training with them, which we all went through. And uh, we have, I have shy little girls and shy little guys and some guys who come from mass Com who say, where's the other flex in the Nagra? And I say, we ain't got none. And if we had, we're not going to do it in CD1. We're going to uh, find out who you are first and build up from the bottom. Uh, told somebody about this, you just keep picking cards off until it's the right one. We won't stop on the deck. Um, we'll just keep peeling back to childhood. So I start telling them how I think days were created when I was four years old. Can we find a common ground there? I'm not interested in turning out polished work whatsoever. Um, it sounds anti-intellectual. It's not. I'm dealing with people um, who are it's probably in America's frontier, the South. Uh, I don't think California could possibly qualify anymore as a frontier uh, of death, maybe, perhaps in the Los Angeles area. But, um, well, it's showing us how to die properly, how we will all come to an end. Uh, but Florida is still somewhat backward, and it has overtones of people coming down from the east and from Canada, and you have this constant combing of uh, 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 words and cultures from other places, and the people are still the same, though. They, somehow people, uh, the oldest set tends to go to St. Petersburg or to, uh, I don't know what, different places. They get little uh, trailer communities, which leaves the city still very, very much alive with students who are, uh, who are able to have city life as well as uh, remain Floridian. Uh, I noticed old Alabama Moon in there, which uh, uh, Kurt Vile is another uh, great influencer, influencer upon me. Um, he wrote for the 20s. I don't think he wrote for the ages. Uh, he wrote directly for the 20s, uh, for, the, for the cabaret, not the cabaret. The cabaret was a musical theater, uh, just fun. I think the cabaret was a very, uh, was a very harsh theater dealing with uh, uh, political aspects of living, this sort of thing social comments of the day, and usually contained an awful lot of English words, O Moon of Alabama. Did any of you know that's the Alabama song? Yeah. It really grabbed me because uh, I was very, very fashionable during the 20s, like we would throw French into a uh, uh, darling chevaux and beaucoup, and it's like, what to do, je ne sais pas what to do, and so, ah, wow, you know, fantastic, and those two lines of French. Well, there, uh, they would throw in, uh, if any of you saw uh, uh, the Blau Angel. Angel. Uh, I didn't know German all that well, but I remember seeing it uh, at an art theater when I was little and just cried my head off. Couldn't believe this poor woman and this poor man could not get together somehow. 
Uh, I still feel that every time I see it. If only we could bring him back from that schoolroom after that shot. I'm sure we could save him. Um, but anyway, an awful, uh, Omoon of Alabama was very, very fashionable to, to toss in a few uh, heard of words at that time. I don't know what was going on in the South at that time, but uh, it goes Omoon of Alabama, it was just nonsense song, kind of, and then if you listen long enough, it sort of begins to make sense again. Uh, to Omoon of Alabama, we now must say goodbye. We've lost our good old mama and must have whiskey. Oh, you know why. Um, this goes on and on, and the people in the in the in these cabarets would uh, would uh, uh, get with it and then it would be discarded and then years later it came back as a journal of the day it came back as total truth it was uh, unguarded truth I think I think if film is to be relevant nowadays but with all the uh, thrust of information upon us it must we must speak from ourselves we, if we depend upon various um, mediums or media Oh, would be media or various mediums. Uh, I think we all tend to get the same picture. There's not that much difference between what is shown as Buffalo in Buffalo and what is shown in um, Phoenix, Tampa, Los Angeles, these places. Uh, the news comes out of New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles. We get it pumped into it. And uh, I think the only thing that changes is, is sort of local programming and the old late night movie is somewhat different. But outside of that, we're all programmed somewhat the same unless we read our own uh, esoteric uh, journal, you know, by the, the, uh, the various newspapers of the area. Um, we must go back into ourselves and shoot directly. I've often wanted to, and maybe I'm approaching it now, uh, wanted to set up a repertoire area of my students or whatever, and we'd all live in the same building. Mm. We'd all live in the same all live in the same building and uh, sort of bunking type of thing with a place to, like Scott Bartlett's place sort of turned me on to that large area with, a, with an extremely high ceiling and uh, have a camera set up every night somebody would load the camera slave obviously chained to the floor would load this thing and have the light switch right there and when you wake up your first thought you know waha I just had a dream everybody you know down into this thing you three there and 16 jump off there, and, and somebody run across, like, the, you know, whatever it may be, totally unguarded. Because um, I think once you start to think about a thing, it's not anti-intellectual, and it is not uh, denying the mind, it is actually getting right through to it, it's plugging directly into it. Uh, this may come to pass if I can find a, uh, a building of, of size, perhaps Monsieur Van Der Beek and I and run across a building in Tampa one of these days that would be suitable for such an activity. If we're not raided or busted before then. Um, and see what comes of it. Now, every piece will not be good. This is another thing. When one films in the camera, oh God, here I go, putting my foot in somebody else's mouth. No, uh, if, when you film in the camera, it's incredible to believe that, that everything you film is going to be uh, uh, I mean, when you edit in the camera, excuse me, uh, the film that comes out of an all edited in the camera film, uh, I can't believe that so much chance can be left um, to that sort of filming. I do believe that the, uh, that the mind can come in at the editing stage, and there's where it does come in. Um, I don't want to parade around things on the stage, and I therefore usually subtly subtly do effects. Uh, Watersmith, which we don't have, uh, has an awful lot of subtle editing in it, which I don't go around parading. I really don't want to. I, I'm, it's fine when somebody finds it in a film. And it's, it's so beautiful, I feel, my God, here is somebody out of this, out of this void has actually found uh, something that I said, and not, not coded, but I didn't finish the sentence. It's like cutting off the top of the letters and leaving something for the audience. Uh, to have fun with, because I had fun making it. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, reference to other material in Chinese, uh, no, no, in uh, Watersmith, which you won't be seeing. There's a Bach organ going on in the background, uh, and part of the soundtrack from uh, 
1936 film uh, uh, Olympia, and uh, Carmen Miranda singing I, 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 I like you very much. And everybody I've seen will just sit and look at that part. And I don't know whether their ears are off or not, but they, I've often wanted somebody to, hey, there's, there's Carmen Miranda. It's never happened, but. Um, these are these are little um, little things I have fun with, and every now and then somebody will see it. I know in Fire Drill, oh, next one we live uh, has all the letters written backwards on the wall. All of the words are backwards. That was uh, that was painted that way. I painted the sets backwards, um, and somebody else figured out why. It was absolutely wonderful. Uh, uh, even even I didn't know. This is the wonderful thing about depending upon your body, depending upon what it wants to do at that time. Uh, if people are careful enough to view your work, then it doubles the doubles your chewing pleasure. The uh, the words are written backwards. I found out uh, because it was not meant for the person on the inside. The person on the inside of the room never leaves. It's written for viewing on the outside of the wall, and it never occurred to me why I did it all backwards. Of course, uh, I learned a lot about myself after the film is made. Uh, I think deciphering it beforehand is a bit, well, uh, it, you can just handle the thing to death and we'll just uh, become all mauled and possibly die. Um, another thing I'd like to write a treatise on one time is the fact that uh, if you use your eyes too much in making films, if you view too many films, uh, it can't help but somewhat sterilize your own, your own uh, ability to in vision. Uh, if you're given every conceivable uh, attitude, uh, line, shading, tonality, and glutted with it day after day as we are now in various films, uh, there's very little left for you to, uh, uh, to do except uh, be eclectic to a rather devastating degree. Uh, I've spoken to my students about this. I said, turn off your eyes, use every other, every other sense you have, but bring to me what the other stimuli cause to be seen uh, in your head. Use your internal eye. And I think possibly some of the filmmakers who, uh, such as, uh, who did we see? Hill, right, the other day? That, that was his name. The Hill film? Hill, right. He, um, was a product of, of an earlier time when there wasn't a great deal of, uh, wasn't any television at all, there wasn't a great deal of uh, a flooding of the senses outside of, outside of print. And here we get back to English again and uh, language. Uh, other senses feeding into the internal eye. When you read about a disaster, the, uh, the, the ship sinking, remember how he fantasized it out in the open and sank his little ship. He, he went through that at his own level. Uh, radio, too, I think was in, incredibly invaluable and um, was something that certain people could not have done without. When you listen to Jack Armstrong or Captain Midnight, without seeing it on the screen, uh, you could not help. And he said, Jack, Jack, uh, look inside this cave. You, you went inside that cave about five feet from your eyes. You were traveling inside that cave. You could you could see almost anything, but you were walking inside this cave. Um, and if it said, it's taller than 16 buildings, or something, I got you, <laughs> up it went, you know, and it constantly expanded. And I believe there is a muscle, some sort of interior optical <coughs> muscle that is being constantly given this all the time. And you're turned on to sound. I am directly turned on to sound. I have a wire very, very badly crossed, and I can't find it. Uh, somebody can either speak a word, or uh, give me a feeling, or I can see a feeling, but not not sight will not turn me. Sight I can appreciate for its own, I can frame very, very easily and appreciate that. But to set it in motion, something else must happen. Heat, uh, sound, almost any smell, almost anything can make that picture move, except another picture. Um, I don't know whether this is making crystal and sense to you or not, but in order for it to be an art form, and that is what I was brought to Florida to teach, um, it has to be the self. I can't see a Van Gogh, you know, handing out paintbrushes to friends. 
there was nobody around. And uh, Jack, would you do the uh, magenta? And Jane, you're the green. Sam, I want you to move right in and put them yellow swirls like this. Okay, now let's get in there. Uh, you just don't delegate that kind of authority. Uh, it is your decision. In his case, it was almost, uh, almost vitally necessary that he state it all. And uh, when it gets down to uh, why do you make films, because I have to, or why do you make film, uh, why do I have to breathe, this sort of thing. I'm sure you've heard that before. It's somewhat cornball. But I do believe that people uh, are driven to the point where it ceases to become uh, a commercial endeavor. It never was with me because it's always cost me all the money I had. So it's always been somewhat in reverse. But, um, yeah, I'm going to skip around again. I have a couple of things here. Uh, notation that uh, the artist must remain a child. Uh, this, I believe, is almost absolutely necessary. Not, not childish, but perhaps childlike. Um, you, cannot, you cannot become osseous on the outside. You cannot crust over. You cannot fear a great deal. Otherwise, uh, this is going to uh, hold your mind in and inside the social uh, or whatever caste that you happen to be found in. Uh, if any of you have read Letters to Father Fly by James Agee, um, a number of revelations as the artist grows up can be, can be found. And this one just yelled out at me, uh, you must remain, you must remain a child, at least in some part of you. Uh, perhaps that's the reason why so many uh, people in San Francisco I knew who were married uh, broke up. Uh, I thought until just now that perhaps it's because the artist, the most artistic one of the, of the two, uh, advanced. No. Uh, on second thought, I believe the uh, most artistic of the two possibly regrets, which made it impossible for the, uh, for the tie to remain. Um, it may surface as irresponsibility, something of this sort. I really don't know. But uh, when you find an older person bouncing around and doing things that a five-year-old would be punished for, then I want a divorce, sweetheart, out. Uh, if you don't flush the toilet again, you've had it. This sort of, there's, a, there's a certain amount of, uh, of, of, of idiocy involved. Michael Stewart said it the other, other night. He said, uh, I, I'm, I'm nuts. He said that you absolutely have to be. And I want it this way. I wouldn't have it any other way. Uh, yeah, you can view it as nuts, too. But I don't think it's that. I think it's that you remain dis, uh, disengaged from this process of, uh, of, uh, of requisite aging. I can't really say it. I, I feel for my students directly. I mean, I don't God here, the subjects there. I'm down at their, down, there we go, wow. I squat down at their level. I see into their eyes. I, I usually sit slightly lower than they do so I can look up into their faces. Um, I really believe that there is, there is where it, it could and must be captured. If they are uh, plugged into things that are done and have been done too long, I've lost them. Um, yeah, uh, just, I just made notes all kind of things. Uh, another reading which I found extremely, extremely powerful and uh, disturbing is uh, Kierkegaard's purity of heart is to will one thing. Have you ever, anybody ever read this. I see. Okay. It's a, uh, it's a book written by the uh, supposedly uh, uh, father of the uh, Christian existentialist approach. Um, I took a course in Stanford just, just on his writings and it was forced down my throat. I wouldn't have read it otherwise, I must admit. Lots of things I wouldn't have read otherwise. But this, once you got past the, the taste, you had it be it's a little didactic, but uh, purity of heart is to will one thing is fantastic. There's absolutely nothing to compare with it. Uh, as to driving home why, you must will one thing, and duplicity will do you in. The more, uh, the more diverse, the more dichotomy uh, in your approaches, um, we only have 100%. Uh, anything detracting from that will make it less than 100%. And perhaps this is the reason um, a, a childish sprint through your work is almost, almost vital. Otherwise, you do become terribly tired, and sort of like the picture of Dorian Gray, whammo, you age, the moment you stop. All of that catches up with you. I think this is one reason why Picasso might be able to marry a 23-year-old, this sort of thing. I don't know. Uh, but you do remain slightly 
childlike. Um, and that's not bad. Only if your society says that, now let's wise up, you know, and get in here and do these things. And uh, really it's, uh, you know, it's awfully late in life for you to be enjoying yourself. And I, I don't, I, I don't really see that at all. It's never occurred to me that, uh, you know, to, uh, to age. I will, but uh, not until I get ready. Watersmith was uh, dedicated to uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald. I, I, I'm telling you things I don't really, I just don't really say um, to, I, 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 I've never said them before. Um, why? Because uh, he wanted more than anything else at uh, Yale to be president of the Triangle Club. I mean, that is what he went to Yale for. No, Princeton. Princeton, excuse me. Yeah, uh, it would have been rather hard from Yale, you're right. But he wanted this more than almost anything else. He was denied this. And I, his, his life started downhill at that moment, uh, <laughs> from which he never recovered, I guess. But uh, it, was a, it was a sprint for Fitzgerald. I really felt badly for somebody uh, who had so much going for him and uh, seemed to stumble. Um, I didn't want to stumble. I was photographing uh, champion swimmers, and I wanted to be a champion uh, filmer of uh, people swimming in the championship style. And I just out of nowhere, OK, Fitzbabe, this is for you. But uh, I didn't write it on it. I think the AFI would have allowed uh, anything other than their name on there. Uh, again, another note, take self to film, not film to film. I covered this a bit earlier. Uh, geez, I love the works of other people, but I, I view them as some housewife in, uh, in Utica with you. I, I, I really go in and I'll sit down and watch the Poseidon adventure, and I will not say, but is it art as I leave? No, no, it's a corporate, it's a corporate endeavor. And I'm sorry, but uh, you just can't do anything with about 10 or 12,000 uh, people on your payroll and the guy, you know, hounding you for the budget uh, every day. Uh, how much went out for this? How much went out? You can't really do it. Uh, you have to be uh, responsible to yourself. So I can't really judge Hollywood films at all. I just, it's beyond me. I want so much to uh, inject what, what video can do and what lasers can do and holography. But I can't really say that I've yet touched film yet. It's an incredibly deep thing. It's incredibly beautiful. Um, the, the editing of it, the old 124 frames per second bit, gives you a great deal of power. And the sound, too. Uh, can you imagine an, an art form where you can control the picture, the motion, the color, the lack of it, white screen, black screen, plus the sound, plus the level of the sound, plus the quality of the sound? You have two of the main senses at your disposal. Some people deny the ear. They, they show silent films. Now, that uh, one of my favorite film people is John Schofield, who made a film called Die, and unfortunately left off a soundtrack noise. And uh, you don't have a silent film then. You have an audience noise film plus, plus a screen. You know, you have people <coughs> You know, little, little shuffles, and somebody else right in, the, right in the middle of something very tender can, can sneeze violently, and then, then there's a ripple of laughter. You've, you've lost your film. Uh, I urged him again and again, didn't listen, so I hit him, uh, that <laughs> if, you would only, if you would only put white noise on this thing, something, uh, a hiss, or raindrops falling on it, if you would only do something along these lines, 